Welcome. Thank you for joining. We're walking along the uh, barrier beach here, Fire Island National Park. And we come down to the breach that's broken through the barrier beach back in the hurricane superstorm sandy days. And we'll see how this is progressing along here. This breach was created back on uh, the end of October, October 29th, November 1st of 2012. Hi, how are you? I hope the signal holds up. This may be a marginal cell link area. And also I hope I can see the comments because I have the iPhone in the landscape mode, but the comments are appearing 90 degrees to my field of view. Okay, great. Good signal so far. Well, maybe T-Mobile is increasing its uh, range. I know a couple of years ago this was a marginal area for T-Mobile. Well, here we are walking down this way, heading west on Fire Island. Another hundred yards or so, a couple hundred yards, and we'll be at the breach itself. I wanted to set up back there. It's been a while since I've been down here to this breach. I think it wasn't uh, very early in 2019. So we'll see how it's been filling in over the last year. They usually have a uh, New Year's Day hike, guided hike, the National Park Service, Fire Island National Seashore Rangers have it, but I don't think they're having it this year, maybe because of budget cutbacks or whatever. So this beautiful day, I thought I'd walk down here myself. Not too bad out. Temperature is in the low to mid 40s. Although in the sunshine here, the filtered sunshine, it feels more like it's closer to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll take a walk up to the breach and then we'll walk over to the bay side and then back down to the ocean side and we'll see how things have developed here over the last year. I understand it's filling in. Nature is doing its thing. There was an inlet here back in colonial days, hence the name they use for this area of Old Inlet. I guess during the Revolutionary War days and in the early 1800s, and then it filled in naturally from the sands that drift along the south shore of Long Island. And then seven years ago, with Superstorm Sandy, Superstorm Sandy punched a hole through this weak spot in the uh, barrier beach, so created a new temporary inlet, or as it's referred to as a, a breach. So we have salt water from the ocean flowing into the bay here now. This is the east end of Great South Bay. Locally it's also known as Bellport Bay because the village of Bellport is right across the bay on the north bank, north shore. And you're getting obviously a lot of fresh ocean water to flush in and out of here now. Certainly uh, made a difference with the quality of the water in Bellport Bay and Mariches Bay. There is the Mariches Inlet 
Well, I'm going to guess about four miles to the east of us, across from East Mariches. That's been there for quite some time. So now you have a better circulation pattern for ocean water coming in and out of the, the bay here with this breach. Uh, very low tide here. Andrea, how are you? Good to see you. Welcome. Welcome to Fire Island. We're at the Fire Island National Seashore across from Shirley and we've walked westward the mile and a half to the Atlantic Ocean breach which was punched through the barrier beach here by Hurricane Sandy Superstorm Sandy seven years ago oh look at this boy that is filling in of course it's very low tide now but I'll get right up to the bank and we'll see what this looks like. I think it, after it punched through, was punched through by the storm, it actually widened quite a bit. Let me guess now over a third of a mile wide maybe even more than that and uh, since I've been coming down here I've been making hikes down here on a regular basis for the last seven years and this is definitely starting to fill in now you can see the sand is filling in on the east side of this breach and it will work its way across eventually until it closes up uh, totally over at the west side. Now there may still be some erosion over on the west side over there but uh, not as much as when it first opened up. Uh, this is looking to the west, northwest. Let's walk right down to the waterfront here, water edge I should say. Oh, sure. Now we have a super low tide on the ocean right now. The uh, late December, early January tide cycle is usually the greatest of the year as far as uh, differences between low tide and high tide. And also there was a new moon a couple of days ago. So that may factor into what we see today. This is the first time in all my trips down here that I've seen this solid sandbar out in the middle of the breach. So there's water flow on both sides of that sandbar. And it looks like the tide is still rolling out from the bay. We'll get a closer look in a little while and we'll see what we can see. At high tide where we're standing right now, this would all be underwater. Now this breach is not navigable. The park rangers have it listed as off-limits. Although years ago, uh, when it first opened up, uh, folks used to drift in and out of here with their boats, fishing boats. They'd run through on an outgoing tide and then motor back into the bay and then, then do a reverse course again. And there was some pretty good fishing going in through in this area. I don't know what the current situation is as far as the quality of fishing here. 
Let's take a look at this. Uh, you see all these ripples. So that's where probably where the last high tide was earlier today, this morning. So that all of what you see right there would have been underwater about six hours ago, six, seven hours ago. Thank you for joining. All right, now I'm looking west across the breach, and there is that sandbar that you see formed right in the middle of the breach, and then there's a channel on the other side. So my best educated guess is that it is filling in from the east sandwise and eventually this in another 10 years or so maybe not even that long it will close up again and this is what happened back in colonial days uh, there was an inlet here back in the revolutionary war days late 1700s early 1800s and then that closed up naturally and then 200 years later well 300 years later Superstorm Sandy opened it up again. I'm walking north toward Bellport Bay, which is the eastern end of the Great South Bay here on Long Island. And I will pan around in a little bit and show you uh, basically what's going on here. Okay, if I look to the east, you can see the bank over there, and this is, uh, this is how wide the breach was when it first was created. And you can see uh, the uh, dunes there, the remnants of the dunes and the dune grass. So water would have been flowing all through here on the in and out tides, ocean water would have been breaking through here. This is looking to the southwest and to the south back out to the ocean. And this view to the south tells me that uh, this sandbar has started to fill in just to the south of us. so. The ocean only comes across here now through the breach at high tide. When I first started walking over here, uh, even uh, at low tide, you would get ocean flow through this be breach. Now it appears that it's only uh, being uh, flushed at high tide or a storm surge. If there were a storm, I would say. And I, I, I'm going to guess that, that tonight's high tide, most of where we're walking right now, this will be underwater again, but it will be shallow. As you can see, there's no navigable channel for boats to go in and out. You tried to get in and out of here through a power boat, it would be very extremely dangerous. You'd run aground, and if the ocean waves were such, that probably catch you and start pounding the heck out of your boat. People used to come through here with kayaks, but then the uh, park rangers put a stop to that because that also became quite dangerous. All right, walking north. Thank you for joining. We're at the Atlantic Ocean Breach here at the Fire Island National Seashore. This breach was created by Superstorm Sandy seven years ago on October 30th, 29th, or no, yeah, I think it was the 29th. It was around that date. I'm losing track of my dates now. Punched through here, uh, the Barrier Beach, 
and the National Park Service made the decision to let nature take its course rather than uh, employing dredges to refill this. They're just going to let it uh, fill in naturally since it's done that historically. I would say a few more years, certainly no more than 10, this again will be closed in. Barring any uh, future uh, storms, heavy duty storms. That's looking back to the northeast toward the community of Shirley across the bay. I'll just pan slowly to the left. We're looking across the east end of Bellport Bay or the Great South Bay toward Brookhaven Township, Brookhaven Village I should say, uh, Bellport off to the northwest there. And then this is looking west at the other side of the breach where Fire Island continues all the way for another 25, 30 miles up to uh, Fire Island Inlet, Fire Island National Park, or Robert Moses Park, they call it now. Very calm here, folks, very tranquil today. Again, you can see where the water was at the last high tide cycle. See all these little gullies here. Well, it's not Smith Point State Park, it's Smith Point County Park. And yes, uh, Smith Point County Park is, from where we're standing, is about a mile and three quarters to the east of us. This is the eastern section of uh, the Fire Island National Seashore, what they refer to as the Otis Pike High Dune Wilderness. And uh, the eastern border of uh, the High Dune Wilderness borders with the western border of uh, Smith Point County Park. And you get over to uh, Smith Point County Park and also this facility by coming down William Floyd Parkway and across the Smith Point Bridge. There's a drawbridge that was built uh, and opened up on July 4th. 1959. So that's how we get over here. And then uh, we park our vehicle at the uh, Smith Point County Park parking lot, and then we walk over to the uh, Fire Island National Seashore, and we walk along the barrier beach here. So here is the bay side of the breach, and it has filled in significantly with sand since this was first punched through seven years ago, seven years and two months. And as I'm, I've been saying here while we've been uh, describing this, eventually this is all going to fill in again, barring any major hurricanes or major storms again that would uh, possibly open it up again. Because what happens is the ocean currents are such that the, the sand drift along the south shore of Long Island basically is traveling from east to west. So the eastern end of Long Island is being eroded and the sands are being carried along the South Shore and deposited along the South Shore beaches back toward New York City. Now, I'm just going to walk over here. You can see, once we get a little closer, how deep this breach was when you, and you see the embankment over here of uh, the remnants of the dunes and the dune grass 
Okay, I'm six foot tall and I'm below the uh, level of that bank over there, six foot three. So that's got to be a good six and a half, seven foot depth when this thing was raging through here, probably even more than that. See, here's all the beach grass that stabilizes the dunes. And uh, this beach grass, it's dormant now because of the time of year, but uh, this beach grass provides stabilization to the sand dunes because the root structure can go down 15, 20 feet in search of uh, fresh water. And I don't know if I can see anything here to show it, but on the roots going down every uh, foot or so, maybe less than that, there's like a little cup shelf and that grabs the sand and it stabilizes the plants in the sand itself. So where we're standing now, I'm looking at what would have been the east bank of this breach when Superstorm Sandy broke it through here back in November, for November 1st or October 29th of uh, 2012. And I'll slowly pan around all the way over to the other side, and you can see uh, oh, a couple of thousand feet wide. But almost half of it has filled in again, or it's starting to fill in. So it's much narrower now than it was seven, six, seven years ago. Of course, this is low tide now also, but uh, I don't think the high tides are ca coming anywhere near where the storm waters initially broke through over here. See, we're looking at this direction. This is looking south toward the Atlantic. And had there not been Superstorm Sandy creating this breach, or some storm creating the breach, then really we would be standing uh, behind the primary dune line. You'd be looking at the north side of the dunes that protect the barrier beach and protect south, south shore of Long Island. But that's all was eaten away, washed away during that uh, storm. Now, historically, this was always a low spot. From my history lessons, I know that uh, the, they called it Old Inlet here, and it was used for a while back in colonial days. At high tide, sailing ships could get in and out of, uh, from the ocean into the bay. As a matter of fact, it was uh, during the Revolutionary War, there was the Manor of St. George over here at what is now Shirley, and that was a uh, British fort, British outpost that held eastern Long Island. And I'm told that was supplied periodically by ships from Great Britain coming through here, but they would only g come in and out on uh, high tides. And then in the early 1800s, mid-1800s, this all filled in again. So then there was no inlet here for a couple of hundred years. Pretty interesting, though. You see the dunes here, on average, about 10 feet above mean sea level. And so that was some raging storm that uh, punched through the dunes here and created this new breach. Let's take a walk over toward the water and uh, 
I'm looking toward the southwest now. The, the sunlight is out over the ocean right now to the southwest of us. Judging from how smooth the sand is here, this has not been hit with a storm in recent times. The wind has smoothed it out. Although every once in a while you'll see uh, pieces of debris where it tell you that storm surges have come through here. For instance, get a load of this big section of what I would call telephone pole or piling over here, which is just sitting here on the sand. So that had to be washed in at one point. All right, but let's walk down toward the waterfront now, to the ocean front. Somebody was down here with a vehicle, possibly the Ranger vehicle. See the tracks. Definitely a very low tide again today. See, before the breach was here, you could ride along the uh, outer beach here that, uh, with a uh, permit for a four-wheel drive vehicle. You could drive the length, practically the length of Fire Island, National Seashore. Although there still are some villages to the west of us, Davis Park being one, and and the other ones you get up further, Fire Island Pines and. People reach those by ferry boat from the south shore of Long Island. But where there are not these existing, pre-existing, established Fire Island communities, then all this other land is now part of the Fire Island National Seashore. So with taking into account the little steps where the villages are, uh, the Fire Island National Seashore Wilderness or National Park runs about 30 miles in length from Robert Moses State Park up by Fire Island Inlet all the way out here to Smith Point County Park. And this eastern section is known as the Otis Pike High Dune Wilderness, named for a former congressman of ours from the first district in Long Island who was responsible for setting into motion, making this a uh, national park, saving it from development. Believe me, folks, people had big plans here, uh, some of our moguls. They wanted a four-lane highway right down the middle of the Barrier Beach and then, you know, Miami Beach casi uh, casinos and hotels of that, you know, that kind of thing. But that, fortunately, we don't have that here. What a peaceful day here, folks. The ocean is very calm. Thank you for joining. I'll just walk out here a little bit and you can see the remains of the water here from the last high tide. And in a few hours time the tide will change, if not already. And this will all then fill in with water on the next high tide, which should be probably around, oh, I don't know, 8 o'clock tonight, somewhere around that time frame. This will all be underwater again. But not very deep because it's being filled in. 
nature is starting to fill all of this in again. And I'm walking basically to the southeast, south-southeast right now, around the edge of this low area here. And we'll take a walk out toward the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean being very calm here on the 28th of December. Uh, temperature, uh, probably in the low to mid 40s Fahrenheit, but in the sun here, obviously without the shade, it probably feels closer to 50. I have a winter coat on and a scarf, and I feel very comfortable. We're at the Fire Island National Seashore. And this is the east end of the Fire Island National Seashore, the section known as the Otis Pike High Dune Wilderness. This is on the south shore of Long Island, New York. Uh, we're about 60 miles or 100 kilometers east of Midtown Manhattan, New York City. That'll give you some reference points. This is uh, preserved land. It's administered by the National Park Service, Department of the Interior. And the specific spot we're at right now is where back on uh, October 29th, was it, 2012? October 30th, I forgot my date. Superstorm Sandy hit here, hit the northeast, and it punched this breach through the barrier beach here from the ocean to the bay. And it, it created this breach at an area what is known as Old Inlet. And it was able to do so because this was a weak point. Well, the storm was so powerful, but also this was a weak point because historically there were, was an inlet here, but it had filled up in time, over time. But there had not been a regular inlet here since uh, the early 1800s. Uh, let's walk out over here. I have to watch where I walk now because if the tide does start to change and start rolling in, I may get myself stranded. Have to wade through 42 degree water. Yeah, let me pan down a little bit, tilt down, excuse me. Okay, so what you see, all these ripples of furrows here of the sand, uh, this was all filled in with water at the last high tide. So you have these little pools of remnant water from the last high tide. And then you see a sandbar on the other side of it. And then now the ocean breakers, the waves are breaking on the uh, edge of the outer sandbar although the waves are really not very powerful today. It's a very mild, moderate ocean today. Uh, we've been having our uh, high tide December and early January flood tides. We, at high tide, we've had a couple of uh, tides that have come up over the top of the bulkhead onto the front lawn. Usually when there's a coastal storm offshore, that'll help it. But just naturally this time of year uh, in, uh, with the full moon cycle and the new moon cycle, in December and January you normally get your, your uh, greatest tide ranges. So we've had some flooding at home uh, on the front lawn. 
you know, not, nothing to affect the house or anything because we're 170 feet back up from the creek and also elevation wise we're about 10 feet up. It is very mild here f right now for this time of year, yes. Yeah, this is a very comfortable day. As I mentioned, uh, standing here in the sun, it's probably close to 50, you know, the sun effect. The actual air temperature, I guess you measure it in the shade. I'm, I'm going to say it's in the low to mid 40s Fahrenheit today. But there's no wind to speak of today. There's a very slight breeze out of the west-northwest right now. Maybe three or four miles an hour. Let me just pan around one more time before we leave here. This is looking west across the breach which is filling in, folks. Nature is doing its thing. All right, well, we do a quick conversion. You know, low, low, uh, what, zero is 32F, zero C is 32F, so, I don't know, five Celsius or whatever, something like that. Maybe a little higher than that. Yeah, this, uh, I may be repeating myself, but people are joining all the time. When this first punched through with Superstorm Sandy, when this breach opened up, uh, where I'm standing now would have been all underwater. So over the last seven years, this has started to fill in again with the natural flow of the sand from east to west. And eventually, in time, barring any future heavy storms, that final ribbon of water you see over there uh, will close in. That's going to take a few more years. Again, this is looking to the southwest, south toward the Atlantic Ocean. I'll give you a bearing there from uh, my visitor from Ireland and, and from Europe. All right, I have the camera oriented pretty much due east. That would be like a bearing of what, 90 degrees? Let me do this a little bit more here. So straight out where we're looking there right now, 3,500 miles away, we'd run into Portugal. Or as I tell people, well, you know, we'll, we'll probably hit the, the Azores first, but not counting them, that's looking due east toward Europe, toward the Iberian Peninsula. And if I swing this way a little bit, see the south shore of Long Island actually runs east-northeast. The whole island is oriented that way. So the further east you go, the further north you go. Like Montauk Point would be uh, considerably further north than we are standing here. All right, but that's looking straight to the east right now across the Atlantic. And the next body of land would be uh, the Iberian Peninsula looking that way. All right, we'll start to walk back toward the Fire Island National Seashore Ranger Station and Visitor Center, which is about a mile and a half to the east of me. Let me check my time here. I, obviously, there's no rush for time. There's plenty of it. Plenty of daylight left. All right, it's about 10 to 4 local time. Yes, that's true. So if I look in that direction, east-northeast, that bearing, sure, I'm going to head right for uh, the coast of Ireland. 
that seemed logical. Now let me pan this out, Galway. Okay. Thank you for joining. We'll walk along the beach here. I always tell people where we're walking now, uh, we're actually walking on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean because it's a super low tide right now. And at high tide, uh, I would be about five or six feet underwater where I'm standing right now. A super high tide. So it's gone out quite a bit here this time of year and this moon cycle. And I don't know the precise time for high tide tonight, but let's say it's about 8 or 9 o'clock tonight. Then this will all be filled in with uh, the ocean again at that time. Oh, well, you're welcome. Uh, I appreciate that. We try to keep it low-key and informative. I mean, it's something different. It's not something you get to see every day of the week. I'm just going to stand here and look at the breakers coming in, the rollers, really. Every once in a while, maybe like every fifth or sixth wave is higher than the others on average. And then there's an outer sandbar way out. Sometimes the wave breaks on top of that. It crests on that, and you'll see white water. And then it reforms, and then it rolls in on the beach here to the uh, sandbar that's just where, they, where you see them breaking now at low tide. And then, of course, at high tide, all of these waves would roll right into about where we're standing before they would start to break. I just love the sounds. The rollers coming in. Again, this is looking to the east, southeast toward the Atlantic Ocean. We're here at the Fire Island National Seashore, the Otis Pike High Dune Wilderness. And this is on the south shore of Long Island, New York, Suffolk County. And we're about 100 kilometers, 60 miles east of New York City, Midtown Manhattan. Yeah, it's uh, not bad. There's, you know, high, thin clouds today, plus the uh, jet contrails. You have your cloud, thin clouds up above 30,000 feet today. Uh, it's fairly relatively low humidity. Humidity is probably about 40% right now, relative humidity. Well, thank you very much, and Happy New Year to you, too. I appreciate that. I appreciate you joining me today for this little walk. I'm going to take my time going back. I'll probably end the broadcast up a couple of hundred yards up ahead here because it's easier to walk back not carrying the camera in the uh, gimbal tripod, gimbal stabilizer. I have what is known as an Osmo 3 stabilizer, 3-axis gimbal stabilizer. Very nice device. Uh, the iPhone is mounted for the landscape mode in the uh, stabilizer. And as we're walking along, you see it pretty much keeps the image very steady. 
You're probably getting a little vertical bounce from my steps. <laughs> yeah, it's about 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right now. So you're obviously, uh, well, five hours ahead of us. So you're, you know, you're four hours past sunset already, especially at your latitude. The afternoon sunsets have started to get later and later here now by a few minutes. The earliest sunset here on, uh, well, around the winter solstice is about 4.24 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But now it's back up to about 4.30. So we have right now, I think I saw today on the weather forecast, today we had uh, nine hours and 16 minutes of daylight from uh, 7, 7.15 a.m. sunrise until 4.31 p.m. sunset today. The, the daylight is getting longer and longer, half a minute each day. Well, yes, that makes two of us. Now, when you have daylight until 8.30, quarter to nine at night, and of course in Ireland and the British Isles and all, Northern Europe, obviously it's much more than it is here. I remember when I was in my, in my army days in Germany in Bad Kreuznach on the uh, summer solstice, how, uh, Sunset over there was uh, what 9:45 p.m. That was amazing. 9:40 something like that. And sunrise was before 5 a.m. Uh, right. I'm. I'm. That's what I've read and heard. Never total darkness. And of course, then you get really north, like St. Petersburg, Helsinki, St. Petersburg, the so-called white nights, right? I, the, it was summer solstice where uh, it really doesn't get dark at all. But of course, I wouldn't want to be there on December 21st. Let's see this area here now. This will start to fill in again on the incoming tide. You can see you have a sandbar there, and then you have this low spot behind the outer sandbar. And as the rollers come in, each wave, as the tide starts to come in, each wave that comes in will be a fraction of an inch higher than the one before it and in six hours or so of that you'll have a high tide there's a few people walking here today let's walk out on this outer bar We'll cross across this little, what was a pool of salt water here a few hours ago, and will be a pool of salt water in another few hours. I call this walking on the ocean bottom, folks. Let's pan around one more time. Back toward the southwest and the west. Back toward the breach. And we'll 
I'll slowly pan around looking south over the ocean and the breakers coming in. Uh, excuse me while I take care of the sniffles here. Oh, okay. Welcome, welcome. Well, the weather doesn't get much better than this on December 28th on Eastern Long Island. Can't complain at all. Thanks very much for I appreciate that you're following me and I appreciate the fact that you enjoyed this scope. I'll uh, keep it going for another two or three minutes here until I get up to this next little area where the water is starting to come back in. We'll take a look at that and then I will uh, shut down the broadcast. Again, for any late joiners, we're at the Fire Island National Seashore here on eastern Long Island, Suffolk County, 60 miles, 100 kilometers east of New York City. And this is uh, this part of the Fire Island National Seashore is known as the Otis Pike High Dune Wilderness. And this is the barrier beach that protects the main south shore of Long Island from the ocean. We have the inland bays on the north side of the barrier beach. The ocean are here on the south side. The National Seashore part of Fire Island, oh, it's about 32 miles in length and probably never more than a half a mile wide at its widest point, something like that. And you have the uh, sand dunes, primary sand dunes, primary uh, dune line right along the ocean front. And then there's a secondary dune line that's built up over the years. And in some spots is what they call a tertiary dune line closer to the bay. So two to three actual parallel lines of dunes. Okay, something tells me I better get across this little rivulet of water here. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe. We can see which way the water is still flowing, then we can tell the tide. Looks like it's still flowing out from this pool of water but I've got to step across here and not get myself too wet. Let's see, how can I do this? I don't want to get my feet wet in 40 degree water. Shoes wet. Okay. Yeah, the water is still flowing out of this low pool here.
Okay, good people. I'm going to shut the broadcast down now because I think I'm losing power on my uh, battery for my gimbal. So thank you very much for joining us for this walk. And we'll be back on the air again one of these fine days. So take care, everybody.